we will go ahead and get started. We're actually starting tonight's meeting with uh, the Hicksville Township Trustees. It's a joint meeting, so we please stand for prayer and a pledge of allegiance. Bow your heads if you so wish. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We give you thanks for this community, for our township. We give you thanks for the employees, the residents, and everybody who works to do a better job to make this a better place to live. We ask you to watch over those who uh, have lost loved ones these past couple weeks and just be with them, guide them. We ask you to be with those who are sick and just uh, be with them and heal them in your, in your loving power. We ask you to be with those uh, in this country that are in stress and, and strife and just um, due diligence in providing better services to our community and to the residents of the United States. We ask you to be with our uh, service personnel throughout the world and be with them and guide them through their diligence of making us free and, and safe in this country. Um, we thank you in all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Roll call, Cheryl. Bassett. Here. Bailey. Here. Beverly. Here. Martin. Here. Miller. Here. Edwin? Here. Concala? Here. Metz? Here. Tidai? Here. But then we do this once a year, right? First time. Is there anything that's uh, working jointly together on some things? Is there anything that you guys want to bring us up to date what's happening in the township? Directly related to Hicksville, different areas? It's all hushy hush. Everything's floating just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any current projects going on right now in the township? Just maybe update. A lot of people don't maybe see your minutes. Maybe just bring them up to speed with what's going on. I mean, uh, any low road construction going on? I know we have some here in town going on. So yeah, we've got some widening out on the state line. We're going to widen the east side between 168 Spencerville. Got oh. some. Did, I don't know. Could you speak real loud? It's hard yeah. to hear. Yeah. If you could go up to the microphone, that would be. That's too sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot, John. Sorry. <laughs> All right, out on State Line Road, we're going to widen the east side um, from County Road 68 north to Spencerville yep. Road. So that'll put two feet more width on that. Um, we've got some hot asphalt overlays, um, one scheduled out on Lake, but it's just those are real quick. But, uh, state line, it'll, it'll take them a day or so to get that widening done and, and uh, set down. So that's I'd say probably the biggest impact might be we're redoing some ditches on K Spear between like Spencerville and, and uh, two, State Route 2. So okay. the west side of that might be kind of. Watch for construction used, workers yeah, and stuff like it, that out there. It's all dependent on weather, though, at this point. I've noticed what you did on Case Spear Miller, if I say that right, you widened it a little bit, right, Correct, along yeah. that stretch right there. That's made it a lot easier. There's some certain county roads that are pretty narrow. Yeah, um, um, that's the first step is uh, the ditch work, and then so next year, then we'll widen that, stretch that to uh, approximately two and a half foot. Right. And then upcoming wise, um, we're looking at uh, total revitalization of uh, Jericho between 49 and Clamour or Lake, but that's a couple years down the road. Cool. That'll be closed for about what they did on Buckskin, is what it'll be doing. I mean, it'll tear the whole road up. Right, that's um, a huge improvement on Buckskin. And it's, yeah, right. that's getting beat up pretty bad from the chicken uh, ranch, I right. guess. <laughs> um, and all the truck traffic going in on there, so. Are you finding more truck traffic out on the county roads? Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the big problem it seems to be for our roads and maintain them is the manure, the manure hauling out. Okay. They'll take 20, 30, 40 loads out and over a couple days down the same roads and just feed them to pieces. And you know, it, it doesn't look like much, but next thing you know, it's $10,000 repairing sections, patching sections of road that you know, they're not designed to handle the repetitive loading. I, I don't know that they're really overloaded or anything weight wise, but it's just truck after truck, right. you know, and, and um, you know, we've spent a fair amount of money in the last couple of years just maintaining, not even really improving right. damage. Right. So, road Refresh my memory, because I know we've talked about it. What's an average cost right now to resurface a road or kind of repair it? 
it's hundred thousand dollars per, per to mile. Pave it. Yeah, per mile, hundred thousand dollars for a relatively narrow one. Yeah, yeah probably hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy for say a eighteen to twenty foot road. And then right. barrel and, and stuff. So, but we try our best to keep the crack sealed with crack seal, and you'll see them, the crews out doing that here this this summer. Um, and then we use the Dura patch. The county comes in and, and in these small sections that we don't have to go in with a asphalt overlay, uh, significantly cheaper and and seems to be, yield really good results on fixing small areas. So we try to focus on keeping them uh, in decent shape right. before they start really falling apart to where you've got to, you know, with, with Jericho, we, we just, we want more width to it. We want uh, uh, to to do some improvement on the, the road base itself. It's just not, it wasn't- You got some trucking firms out that way, yeah. Right. Right. You know, so, they're doing well, which is good business for the township. And, yeah. And I don't, like, like John said, I don't believe it's local trucks as much. Right. Because it's only one or two yeah. or three a day. It's the trucks going from yeah. point A to ten, point B. And ten trucks every hour or something like that. It just, it's like See running a way. trucker up down Maple Street or something. You know, Maple Street wasn't like, built like 49. Right. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up. Sure. So yeah, most of it's this year just maintenance and keeping, keeping things together, a little bit of widening. But, um, Do you guys have any questions for council or anybody with them? You guys got any major projects that you're going to have dirt or anything coming down township roads or <laughs> that we're going to have to worry about more? Can't think of anything. I mean, the, the tower's pretty much done, the well field's done. Next real big project <clears throat> is the fine sled station. And if I'm thinking correctly. Um, I mean, like septic lines, you know, mock or uh, blocks of septic lines or something where they're hauling out multiple dump truck loads or something. I don't think this year won't be. Unless the next real big sanitary separation, storm separation would be what um, the defined slip station down, what Hicks, those kinds of places, am I right? Those plants. So that's going to be a year, a couple, two out. Okay. <clears throat> well, if anybody doesn't have anything left for the township, we will adjourn with that meeting and move into regular council. Thanks for keeping it running, guys. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you, guys. So you have a motion to adjourn, right? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Roll call. Say thank you. Yes. Miller? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Bailey? Yes. 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 Uh, real quick, before I get started with regular council, I wanted to do a presentation um, at this time. That way, if he wants to stick around, he's more welcome to. But if he wants to leave, he can do that too. But I'll leave that up to him. But at this time, I want to call uh, Bruce Hart up. Um, over what, 40 years of service to our community. I should say it over. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not. Uh, uh, Bruce, on behalf of the Village of Hicksville, the fire department, and everything that you've done for this community, saved many lives, been part of many um, different situations over the years, and everything, uh, we thank you for all your service and your time here at the department, and everything you've done. But in, in, with the uh, staff here at Hicksville, the council, and the residents, thank you so much for your service. Thank you. At this time, I wanted to present you with this plaque, with your name on it, and the number of years that you've served Hicksville. Uh, best of luck to you in your retirement. Good luck in everything you do. God bless you. Thank you. All right, thank thank you. you. I want to stand for a second. Thank you. 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 Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck for the other Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<coughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, regular council meetings. We've got approval of the council meeting from April 15th. Any questions, concerns? Make a motion to approve as written. Second. Roll call. Bassett. Abstain. Bailey. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Martin. Yes. Miller. Yes. Edgley. Yes. Thank you. Um, Richard Fox is here tonight. We'll put, he was on the agenda. Richard, will you step up? you have something to address the council with? Yeah. Uh, I didn't even get no answer on the uh, driveway where the uh, street uh, was uh, paved over part of the driveway there. And I got about a lift like that, and I get a lot of mud and all that stuff in there. The worst thing is in wintertime, it fills up full of water. Somebody goes down there and slip and fall. And my question was, is who's going to be responsible? You guys or me? I didn't cause the trouble. I mean, I didn't, of course, I didn't, we didn't live in the house at the time, but right. the street was raised higher. And when you get water, it really, it squishes up the drive, you know, up, up the approach, and it goes down, and then it, it does eventually uh, dissipate. But in the wintertime, when it freezes, it's, and then people, for some reason, they use our driveway a lot of times to cut across the street there. Right. Was that something, for, correct me if my memory served me well, but were they going to take a look at that situation last time I was here to address it? Or? I don't remember the last time that approach been paved. Yeah. Well, what, when was that paved? Do you remember? It was before. It's before been many, 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 many years, years ago, like years. 20 years ago or something that's been like that? I don't know. I mean, it wasn't yeah, something we just recently did. I mean, it was. No, 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 no. It wasn't recently, no. Yeah. No, no, no it, it was there. It. During my that was before your time. Years. I mean, it's been like, I don't know, I guess. Because then you moved here in the late 90s, was it, did you say? Pardon? Was it the late 90s you said you moved here in 97, 98? Well, we lived at 314 Dixon Avenue. No, I meant you moved over to there. Oh, was it the we went over there, I think, I think about six years, probably, maybe seven, I don't know. Not very long, we just no. kept things set up. I didn't know if there was someone going to now take a look at it with our street department and kind of check, because there's really not no drain, I, I assume, it's just standing there, then it's low. Well, the water, what it does is, the water comes up and, and goes up into the approach. And then uh, the uh, pavement is chipping off the regular, the cement driveway is chipping off, the, and then and now it's got it's got a thing there, about like that, and, and it holds water. Now, in the summertime, it don't really matter that much, but uh, in the winter time, is what's you know it, it, it freezes. When right. you get a thaw, it freezes and fills up, and then it won't drain out. But it drain does it drain now toward when it starts draining does it drain toward uh, drain now it will yeah it, it takes yeah. It takes a while but it, it, it goes I don't know where it goes at right. how it goes underneath the streets well usually in the winter time Richard if we get those real thick kind of heavy rains it turns to ice it builds up places it's like that all over town I mean yeah. there's yeah, driveways this, there are, this is all this is this is our, this is every time we have a, it ain't no rain it's when you have a snowstorm or something then you even when you put salt on the street it melts and it goes okay. down the gutter, down the side, whatever little bit of sure. curb we got, and it goes up into that there and sets there, and then if <clears> when it's <throat> full, it runs runs on down to the sewer. All right. It's just like it, uh, it's the gutter it goes up into the driveway approach. Sure. I mean, guess what we could do is maybe since the, the street department down, kind of take a look at it. But yeah, I know yeah. this last rain we had, there was. Water getting collected all over the place. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, it's just his same problem. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's the winter time the street, we're talking about. Down where the handle factory right. is, all that water runs down from there down all those driveways too. Right. See it all over the place. But if it's a situation where it takes a while to get get rid of, I mean, I can't speak for council, or but um, you know, I don't know when it's going to get paved again here next. If it's on the agenda for down the road, but well, my question is, is who's responsible for the guy or a woman? Walks on there, slides, falls, breaks her head. Right. That's what I'm talking about. We kind of have situations like that all over town. If you don't, you know, if it snows and somebody decides to walk on your sidewalk, you got a couple inches of snow in there and they slip, you know, and you do diligence in, in shoveling and getting rid of that stuff. But you might not be out there before they start walking on your sidewalk, kind of thing. And that just happens. Well, usually, so. if you, uh, I don't know anybody around here sees it, usually I'm one of the first ones to get her walk cleaned off, even if it's snowing. Right. 
I like to keep it cleaned up. Because yeah. we walk, don't we? We like to walk. Okay, next thing is is a uh, cemetery, the sidewalk of the cemetery. Now, I don't know if it's got stones on it yet, but uh, also in the wintertime, I talked to the, I assume the fellow that runs the graveyard out there, or, you know, it's a sex, you know, where they call him. And he said that uh, uh, it is not their responsibility to clean the stones off of there or the snow. Yeah, I'm not sure what, I know he does the driveways out there. It's something yeah. we'd have to check with Ron on that. And yeah. then, well, uh, I talked to him, he said that's what he told me. <clears throat> right. I mean, of course, you can check to see, make yeah. sure I'm telling the truth. But I know that sidewalk, too, is in, in really bad disrepair. It's there is no replacement, but even up. when you get a new one put on there, it, in wintertime, right. the snow piled on it from the, when they plow the site. Plow it's the right place. up against the road. So as soon yeah. as you shovel it and the plows come along, it's, it's inundated with snow. So. Um, maybe that's not a good area to walk in the winter time because you can't stop well, it. From, if I walk out to Hager, and I've seen other people, yeah. if I walk out to Hager out there, I walk. I, use, I always use the walks if I can't. I don't like walking on streets. Right. Because it's a definite. So. And we still have speeders on uh, Bryan Street, and uh, also that big gas tank truck is full of got gas in it going down a little narrow residential street, which I. I, I brought this up to the last mayor about that deal. That, that's not, uh, uh, I've seen other semis at that wholesale house go in there. And this guy here, he just needs to come in on a state route and pull his truck in there and not go by the, by the house. That's a dangerous situation. The state highways are wider. That street is a narrow street and uh, it's, it is something that, that could happen to, you know, you have a problem. Right. So, I'm not sure how to address that as a semi-driver compared to what dropping off fuel at the, depending on how he's turning it into the tanks and everything. Well, I was told that, that uh, that's the only way you can do it, but uh, I'm right. sure there's, I said, well, maybe you need to get a different truck driver because there's, I know when truck drivers can put the, put a truck in this in a little narrow space, so. Right. Uh, it's not a very good idea for them to go down a residential street, I don't think. It's probably not a good idea, but there's nothing in the law that keeps them from going down there. There's no through truck signs. Right. Well, that, that, but but uh, we can post I don't How much is it? No truck sign. It's not, not that very simple. expensive. It's not a simple as buying a sign. Huh? It's not as simple as buying a sign. There's it's something that, kind of it is something that Corey and I had a discussion several weeks ago about the truck traffic on the side roads. Yeah, it's beating the, beating the so, streets down. I mean, they're not made for it. Yeah, because you, know, you got trucks coming out of Arthur Street, you know, yeah. cutting back. But we actually just had a discussion several weeks ago about that. I can see so, a dump truck or something like that because they're, if they go through there. But the, they, they've got to drive this, and that's dangerous. It's full, full of gasoline. I mean, if that something happened, Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, I know it could in a state route, too. Okay, that's all I got to say. Right. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, Richard. Bye. All right, uh, approvement, approval of the uh, bills list. Yeah, I got a question. Some concrete mm -hmm. at the flagpole, Pernus 3D services. I thought we kind of decided we just going to quit using him after that last go around. This is in December. Okay. And then, Trainco Inc., Huffman CDL, 3215. We pay for people to get their license, then they. Mm -hmm. They have to go to school now, according to the federal government. And that's why it costs so much. I work around. People that have, we'll see well, uh, Brian excavating on that well field, is that the final? Don't look at me. <laughs> look at me. Here, look at the where it across the board. I would be. Yes. I have no idea. That's all. That's fine. And uh, choice one for uh, Meadow and Beverly uh, project, uh, is that it? No, there's three of them. It's in your email. Right. But, I mean, is that it for the that section for Beverly Drive and, and uh, yes. Meadow. Yes, 6,000 was for that. They did a nice job of paving that uh, Saturday and then Bangor just muddied it all up today. Who did? 
And, uh, by golly, that's all I got. We might as well pay him. We want him to come back. <laughs> I'm Second. Motion. Roll call. Beverly? Yes, ma'am. Martin? Yes. Really? Yes. Eggley? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Jessup? Yes. All right. Uh, boards of commissions, none submitted. Anybody have anything for that? Okay. Council committee reports. Looks like there's a finance committee and a ordinance committee in your packet. Does anybody have any questions on the finance committee notes? How about them sidewalk notes? Anybody got any questions on them? I do. The, the one where you had about the bring the full council about putting, right. putting containers out, yes. About the 951.05 about setting the trash cans out. Yeah. I, I was actually in favor of the 24 hours pickup before and after, and I know a couple of you guys weren't. Um, main thing is uh, people that work second shift, you know, you get their trash can in the same day. Mm -hmm. uh, or somebody works third shift, or somebody that works over, or you know, you going out of town, you want to put out a day early. I know it says uh, seven. At one time, it was seven o'clock in the morning. Don't put it out before seven a.m. Uh, the trash trucks are actually picking up before seven a.m. Mm -hmm. every week. Get out there before seven o'clock. They start pulling into town about twenty after six. Sometimes they'll park across from the school. They'll park over by the bus bar and they'll sit there and wait. But by six forty, six forty-five, they're they're pulling trash. Yeah. So to say somebody can't get placed out until seven a.m. If you wait till seven, you might already have missed your pickup. It didn't say 2 p.m. the day before is when you right. signed up. So you have one picked up by 7 that night. Yeah, not now, but it says uh, all refuse and garbage and recycling containers shall be placed at the curb before before, before 7 a.m. on the scheduled pickup day for each residence. We can count. <laughs> Watch yourself. We need a little community. Well, that's something the ordinance committee wants to address a little further, or? Or do you want to address it uh, now and, and just put it to a vote? Go with the 24? That's what we said. I mean, we, we said let's just bring it to everybody and put it to a vote. Yeah, that's so what I want to kind of bring up. I make the motion, Robert. Can I? Sure. All right. So am I moving that we make all of the Recommended, I guess. Do the do the one Eric's talking about first. Okay, so we'll start with that one. I'll move that we change the chapter 950.105, section B of the refuse collection ordinance from what it currently reads to 24 hours before pickup and 24 hours after. I'll second that. Roll. Not roll call. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the change should be just wait and do the whole yeah. order there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, recommend that change yeah. 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 in the yeah. order. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what you want to do. Right, yeah. Wait for the ordinance to be wrote, written yeah. and then you vote on it. Okay. okay. Anybody see anything else that needs to be changed? Seemed like the rest of them, you guys, it was unanimous. Yeah. So. But and it was just nipping and tucking the sidewalk. And yeah, I mean, I thing. I don't know really anything about what sidewalk standards are supposed to be. I'm assuming that's what you guys are trying to do is standardize the work so it's written in stone. Mm -hmm. Take all the gray area yeah. out. Yeah. The only question I, I had was the one about the grinding. Was there a reason why Corey didn't want any grinding to be done? I mean, the village hasn't even hired the company to come in and grind some of our own uh, sidewalks down over the years. So. The reason that, that uh, we as a group decided we didn't like it is because uh, uh, it's still not quite right and the, 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 the pitch and everything is still not an ADA type of thing. It would never pass. And when you take a four inch or a three and a half inch sidewalk and ground three inches off of it to get it down to the height of the existing sidewalk beside it, uh, you just, you know, you're just putting trouble a, a year away. So we might right. as well fix it right and have it done with. Was that the same reasoning behind not allowing blocks to be lifted to level them up? Mm -hmm. Usually when you lift, when you pick a block out, like if you're doing a sewer cut and you come through and you, and you saw cut and you lift that block out, 
<clears throat> well, even if you're good enough to get it out and not break it, there's no way to pin it so that when you get your compacted base back in over top of your sewer pipe, you put that in there. Nothing settles like Mother Nature. I don't care what kind of compactor you run, nothing settles like Mother Nature. And so because you can't pin it because of where it's at and how it's at, it's going down. So, you know, Grandma had to pay to get the sewer done, and now she's got to pay that guy to come back next fall or whenever to pick it back up. It's just better to pour one, pin it to the, each side and pour it. We're trying to keep you know, repetitive stuff out, so it's not every couple of years that somebody's getting a letter. Well, like you said, though, Ron, Mother Nature settles things and changes things, works in different yes. things. What I feel sometimes is maybe unfair is if you do your due diligence and spend two hundred dollars or two thousand in sidewalk repair, and for some reason it starts cracking or moving, and then a year later they come back and say, "Hey, you're." You just spent a bunch of your hard work, earned money, and now you got to fix it again. That's that's a, to me is a hard thing to swallow. You did your due diligence and the repair work, and Mother Nature starts acting like a small crack to me, and, you, and you're forced to repair from a small crack if it's not upheaved. I've, I've had a situation with that. Right. I just don't want this town to be a financial burden to its citizens. Right. right. If we're um, not allowing them to try to fix it. We're just forcing them to completely redo it. It's a little bit more well, costly. Maybe I misunderstood that. I, I, just like I was, me and my neighbor, he's got one that's about to, uh, he can still come in and he can jack it that up. up. He's yeah, a, he can foam it up. He wouldn't be taking that panel out. So you can lift them. You just yeah. can't take a whole well, panel out the, and put the it back. The block's lifted. Yeah, but you can't lift it out. Well, it doesn't yeah, say might, lift it out. It just well, I say lifted. you might need to clear that up there. Yeah. But yeah, you can still jack them up mm -hmm. that's the right word mm -hmm. yeah it says if one or two blocks are tilted cuts shall be made the blocks lifted the gravel um, retamped and leveled and the blocks replaced he wants that moved entirely so he can't even do that so you but that right. would include lifting yeah. blocks so no i want to say if the panels removed rather than well, i mean i guess that's how if we're, you we're, take that out then the, the section you just read that, want, that we want removed uh, is when you physically pick the, the pad out of it, take mm -hmm. it clear out, do whatever you're going to do, and then try to put it back in. That's the part I just explained to you. Yeah. Is you there, can't pin it and secure yeah. it. Is there another ordinance that states that putting foam in there and lifting it, or whatever, I don't know the terminology, but putting something in there and lifting it is okay? That's what we're trying to establish. Uh, and I don't know if it, it's obviously not uh, clear enough, or, or you have got hold of it. Not clear enough. <laughs> clear them. Uh, so give him him the devil. Oh well, no. I mean, <laughs> if, if you can foam it, you know, like if like if you have a, a if your driveway and and it drops down, you got a concrete drive and it drops down, and you got that big a bump to yeah. go into your, to your garage. Yeah. <clears throat> you can foam that. Right, but here it says that you can't. He wants to remove it so that they can't be lifted. So I guess that's my question is. What are we defining as lifted? Removing Lift the foam. whole entire block mm -hmm. or using some sort of, because it doesn't if say you, that. If yet. you take right. the whole entire block out, well, it needs, needs to, to specify that. Need to that. that. And make it remove. Yeah. Or we'll get you whatever the legal word is. What's Well, like I said, you guys got time to read these. I mean, I think the ordinance committee to come and try to tweak some of these things and streamline them. So we got to come back to my ordinance, right? Do you have any questions? You don't want to vote for them? You have a is there, is there anything else that well, we talked about this stuff for a long time, trying to get all the gray areas out, make it as simple and easy as it can be, uh, make it easy on the people, and. Uh, Hopefully, if there's anything else that you even think has a little bit of gray in it, let's fix it tonight. One thing I could say for sidewalk ordinance, I mean, I don't see there are any changes in here, but maybe to have a date set to where people will be notified by this day, let's say April 1st of each year, and they have a, a deadline of 
you know, September 1st, so let the resident know how much it would cost if, approximately if the village did the work. So, and our, our, this whole last issue. Our new that. guy there that is, is, to date, has done an exceptional job. Uh, he is devising a plan, <laughs> how he's going to approach it, attack it, however you want to phrase it. Uh, and also, uh, and the mayor had said something about uh, you put a sidewalk in and, and uh, a year later, two years later, it's got to crack it. We're not coming back to that crack. We're doing quadrants. Quadrants. Yeah. But just we're, we're not coming out. back to that first quadrant From that that man just spent the $2,000 on for right. a crack until everybody else is done. Doesn't that sound good? Nice? They did talk about giving them more time. Um, we, we talked about doing May starting it in May versus mm -hmm. that way it gives if there's an assessment in the pr in the next year there's time to do that without being right on top of you know that we only have in 30 days to do you know to get the bill mm -hmm. and then you got till September 1st if you're doing August to August you don't have you only have 30 days so if you do May to May that gives t that gives throughout the whole summer mm -hmm. yeah. versus the end of summer when it's getting much, much harder to pour concrete, starts to get wet, starts to get cold. So that gives the resident, you know, if you if you give them, send them something May 1st, that, get, that gives them the whole summer to repair it. And then the following year, if it has to be assessed, then you got from May to September. To can, we, can we also maybe let them know ahead of time that their quadrant's gonna be the next year to be assessed? So then that gives them additional year to save plus a year sure. to, to do it. It might be nice to know, hey, guess what? You guys are, are up. This, you don't, I don't know if that looks what that looks like, putting it on their water bill. So it, it's gonna, my, my plan, and I think we're, we're me and Corey are in agreement with it, and you guys can tell me what you think of it. I'm just gonna simply follow our bulk trash Recycling quadrants. Water. That seems to be broken up sure. yeah. good enough and we don't have to reinvent the wheel just to do it for sidewalks, right? Yeah. And then people should already know it too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Use the similar quadrants for um, leaf pickup this yep. past year as well, so people kind of know what that looks like. Yeah, and I've I've I've, I've often f tried to think of a way to get this information to people. Um, the young lady last time said, you know, how are people supposed to know? Because maybe they don't want, you know. So that's that's something I'm trying to put together in my head and I'll, I'll take any ideas with that as well because even you can't send it I mean water bill is a good a good way to do that maybe we amend that map and and label it with this how sidewalks are going to be done too. And maybe as, even put the year on it. Sure. So yeah. in you know 2020, yellow is 2025 uh, yeah. and green is yeah. 2026. Yeah. So they know what year they're that you know be looking be on the lookout for. It. Absolutely. Do you have a, any type of a time frame when you might? I, I realize you walked in, you you've got your hands full, and, you, and you're doing a great job getting things Thank straightened you. out. But <laughs> any uh, any just a general idea of when you might be able to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We decided to take this year completely off and I okay. and, and I think we expressed that mm -hmm. several um, yep. a month or so ago this year we're, we're gonna start fresh next May that way we have a plan we can you know we can execute the plan without going oh we should have done that well we I guess what I'm um, I'm I mean, I probably didn't present it properly but <coughs> when do you think you'll have something that uh, when the people come in to pay their water bill she can slip one out there and going here's here's what's gonna happen in the next four years and have your map done with like like these two said with the quadrants in 24 25 26 when we think you'll have something like that i would say within the next two to three months oh great okay we're because we're i mean right now is a very very busy time sure. for, for me doing nuisance and mowing yep. and yep. and so forth uh it's not something that i work on every day yep. mm -hmm. so I would say within the next, by by the end of summer, I would I would like to you know have a plan and present it to I'm just whoever. Saying, and I agree with Tony. It, it would be nice if that was if, if we're going to start 25. Sure. If we could get this information to them in 24, the end of 24. So yeah, I would see. I would say for me personally, I would say if you're going to start in May, I think the town should know by the first of next year. 
however we decide to do it. Before Christmas, that might keep them from spending too much money. <laughs> that, that's a good point. I know that there's um, a lot of people talking about transparency. That sure. word came up quite a bit. And I think that this protects you as well, right? So then yeah. if people come back to you and say, I didn't know, if we get those numbers and those, those years out to them in advance, you know, potentially four years in advance, then people can prepare for that. And that's right. us being transparent. And what we're finding is, is mailing is not I heard you. Not the way to go. Um, I've had yeah, a lot I mean, of. I would, I would recommend the website. I mean, I website. use it all yeah, the time. Website. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Adapt the garbage schedule, the color, whatever you're and just yeah. put in a year with a note for sidewalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to reinvent all of that. You've already done And then with a little narrative that says, like, letters mm -hmm. will go out May 1st, you'll have a year to fix it. And mm -hmm. the only thing I'm hesitant about is. If we say this is what it would approximately cost if the village does it, well, we need to like kind of stick by that because people are going to base their decision on, oh, it's only going to be eight hundred dollars if the village does it, where my contractor's saying it's going to be a thousand. But then it comes back when the village does it, and it's fifteen hundred. We're going to have a lot of mad people. Yeah, we're not again. Again. We're not playing that game again. Well, so. say, why do we have to tell people what we think it might cost? That's yeah. not our job. I would nope. avoid doing that. Because you're not going to run into the same thing you just ran into. Yeah. Yeah. Just lip. Yep. We don't want to part of that. Yeah. One other thing, while Jared's still in the hot seat here. <laughs> Rachel, if you the chapter 521.12. Jared, did you want to chime in on that? Regarding the definition of a dwelling? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, we, we did. She came and spoke with me. Cool. Um, I don't know where uh, we didn't speak today. I just got back today, and I don't know where she's at on that. I had kind of we would like to just simply change the word to structure. Perfect. Yeah, Super. I think so. I think dwelling really helps us. And honestly, the revised code has really bad definitions of dwelling. I I, I was hard pressed to find a really good definition. Kind of go. The kind of the so. go ORC kind of goes back and forth, back and yeah. forth. The structure is a pretty common blind. Yeah, yeah. So that's easy to do. I think so. I think that's the best way to handle it. Thank you. Anybody, Anybody have part? anything else for sidewalk? One thing I'd like to add, because it's still in the back of my mind, I would still like to see where we put on our water bills something where we pay each person that has a water bill pays three or four or five dollars whatever computes out to what we need plus our seed money from the village that <clears throat> then the village just fixes the sidewalks you don't worry about them they're paid for because you paid your three dollars or five dollars I brought this up years ago, and, and the, most of the people around here were, we're, we're we are in We haven't had a chance to get a meeting scheduled with uh, Corey, myself, uh, Kent, and I remember who the other one was, uh, you, for the water sewer rates. And Corey had an idea about changing base rate to make it help yeah, offset yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we had to look at the numbers, but that was where we're going to bring that. Right. That was my question. Where does that even start? Does it start with finance? Does it start with water sewer? Well, we wanted to, Corey had an idea about the base rate, right. so we were going to kind of try to talk about water sewer first and see where it went from there. <clears throat> I was Don saying, said we had I to set the rates for 2025, 26, 27, and we have to meet. We just have I think it. I think it does kind of take that undue burden off the taxpayer. Yeah. So <clears throat> that has to pay that to come up with that. We need to do that astronomical figure, it appears to be. So, because that, that changes everything with the ordinance, too. Right, <laughs> right. That's so hopefully so in June we can meet. Copy and paste. And stuff. That's what Rachel loves to do change yep. ordinances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Robert? Sure. Um, Administrator Ray Parkour was not able to be here tonight, but he. Um, a document saying what he's been up to here started on May 6th. Um, any questions on that? <clears throat> Do you know if we have an update on the, the ballpark lights? 
make it done or it's no, not done? It's um, not done. He, I talked to him about that um, weather, obviously delayed it. Rain. Yes, because the back of the fields are still pretty wet. Okay. He was so hoping wet. within a, a month. Yeah, but okay. I think he said it was like 6,000 pounds. Yeah. And okay. yeah, you can't even walk right now without seeing it. So, right. yep. um, okay. He was hoping within a month, though. Know the splash pad. Uh, we actually did a groundbreaking ceremony, a small one. A lot of the donors, uh, some of the contractors are there. Uh, I wanted to thank Corey for getting arranging that with everybody. Um, it was a nice little ceremony. Just thanking them for their time, due diligence, and putting it together. Um, like I said we met with some of the contractors were down there. Uh, things are moving on pretty good. I think the next group came in here was yesterday or today. Um, Goggles is done with their base work, and then now the, they're playing the piping, so moving forward. Um, I think it's on schedule from what they said, so uh, I wanted to thank Corey for bringing it. all the rain. I was yeah. expecting yeah. that to be delayed. So they've had, had some backup days, but they're getting, they got the stuff done, so that's moving forward. Hopefully get that built here before summer ends, and way some of the kids can enjoy it. But, so. <coughs> Any other questions about it? Corey's not here, but like I said, if you have questions for Corey, uh, call him, meet him at his office, and, and you can talk to him. So, um, <coughs> solicitor's report. So the first one, the final reading of Ordinance 2024-08 by caption only to amend appropriations. To move. Second. Roll call. Beverly? Yes. Bailey? Yes. 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 Miller. Yes. Martin. Yes. Yep. We have the first reading of Ordinance 2024-10 by caption only amending pay Ordinance 2023-17 declaring an emergency. Make a motion to suspend the rules. I'll second. Roll call. Yes. Just a quick question on that. So since we eliminated the fire chief in there, and just as part time, we'll have to change that once we hire a full time. It'll still be considered part time. Well, no, the fire chief is, I mean, I guess it's part time, but it was just fire chief in general and it never said part time or full time no, before. And this one does now. Yeah. Do you I don't the to change it too. Well, but the currently we have like an interim fire chief. Right, he's just filling in the position. Um, but what did it say? Part we didn't change that at all. It's always been. Has it always been part time? Part. It's full time. Well, he's, he's always been part time, but I typed it in here. Oh my goodness! Can we take it out? No, I'm just curious because he used to always say just fire yeah. fire chief. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I'll make questions. Yes. You okay with it? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Beverly. Yep. Yeah. Martin. Yes. Miller. This is the suspend the rules, right? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Eggly? Yes. In second, final reading of Ordinance 2024 10 by caption only amending pay ordinance 2023 17 and declaring emergency. To move. <coughs> Roll call. Yes. Miller? 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 No. Martin? Yes. Beverly? Yep. Bailey? Yes. That's it? Yes. First reading of resolution 2024 11 by caption only to enter a contract with Bauman Enterprises Incorporated for the Water Tower Demolition Project and declaring the emergency. Second. Did anybody has anybody said when he can start? Well, look at me. <laughs> I thought, I thought uh, didn't they yeah. say the mayor sits right beside you. Oh, well, <laughs> I did not hear about that. Wrong. You're looking at I don't get all the <laughs> They plan to have the tower oh. demo by mid June, but I don't know how long it takes. That's what Corey had in his next. Okay. Yeah. So, so mid June. Was that, how much did he have budget for that? Do you know that? It was uh, from the commission, one hundred ninety thousand. Oh. Oh. Thousand that would be. Oh, that one, no. for, the for the demo? Demo. Do you know how much was budgeted? That was. Oh. That's when he sent out today. I don't know exactly. Okay. That's good. I don't know. It was under. The 110 was the engineer's. Right. Okay. Yeah, it was under. 
I forget what he got CDBG. <clears throat> and we were over the engineer's estimate on CDB, CDBG money. So. Oh, was that committed? Yeah. Where are you at, Cheryl? So, so that was. Okay. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend with roll call. All right. Bassett. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Edwards. Yes. Miller. Yes. Martin. Yes. Second and final reading of resolution 2024-11 by Captain Only to enter contract with Bauman Enterprises Incorporated for the water tower demolition project and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Roll call. Bailey? Yes. Yes. Bailey? Yes. Miller? Yes. Martin? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Have we discussed what we plan on doing with that property, if anything? We don't have to do that. The library had uh, expressed maybe some interest. Yes, I knew that the library right. was interested but in it. Once we got a demo, I thought we were going to address maybe. But we were kicking around where we were. If that new tower had to be built, we were kind of seeing where, because that's positioned prop right where, you know, they wanted the 911 tower. So we weren't sure maybe a new one had to be built. But I know Bruce and, and Corey and different people have been working on uh, changing. That's not the place it needs to be. So I don't see how this tower at 75 feet is going to going to be able to be doing what that one did at 186. I just said that they, they looked at it, so. Well, there's no rush to sell it. No. Let's get it down and safely without, you know, any property getting damaged or anything. Hopefully no rain. Um, they get things moved. Uh, there is that building underneath, too, that's got, that's not the demo. I think it's the building, too, that's got. Does, to be does, uh, Meadowing or whoever owns that garage, they pay the village for that to use that? Just have it sit there? Mm -hmm. No, we used to get free internet. Mm -hmm. But we don't anymore. Oh, no. So why are they there free? They're not in there. I mean, well, Mediacom is in the, the shed. Because huh? that's where Mediacom has equipment in the shed. That's where the switcher is that we use to go from the council room to the one out in not, the. Not the head end that's underneath the, the tower. The garage that's. Oh, that one. Yeah, that I don't know. Yeah, that's just full of junk, and and people party in there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. Oh, <laughs> the Fisher, that's fine. Fisher's fine. The big garage. Yeah, it's it's the end of the Okay, yeah. well, you just want to make sure you're talking about the right. <clears throat> but that's our property, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's our garage, right? No, I think it's media comes. Did it come across? It's not on our. Do they pay the uh, That might have been some deal when they came to town. That's been there before you were even on council and I was a Is it their building on our property? It's been there long before my time, so I don't know what the agreement was. We could look into, have our, have our solicitor look into uh, Seeing what it takes to get that out. Well, this is junk. They won't be on the tower anymore. Do you know what they're going to do, Bill? Will they even need anything? No, I, I mean, I, 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 honestly, I, I honestly don't know if they're planning on. They 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 put in a lot of fiber and so forth. That's what I was wondering. So whether they need to have equipment on the tower anymore, or whether they still need to have equipment in the head end, or you know that I I could you'd have to try to find somebody in Mediacom willing to answer your question. I'm not sure what their plans are. I know they've been told for years it's coming down, and we're to that point. It's coming down. The last, the last yeah. time I talked with, uh, with my, they, they said that they they were pretty sure that they did not need any of the equipment that they had on the tower going forward. Yeah. But uh, but but beyond that, for all of the other the, the buildings and the stuff in those buildings, I couldn't speak to. We should have Corey yeah. contact me like yeah. soon so we can find out because they had told me six years ago they wouldn't need the tower mm -hmm. anymore but I don't know what they've done since and what that building ever did sure. our unit that's up there that is, is the next phase coming up has that thing been up there forever well, the 911 tower you mean no no 
The repeater. Yeah. The repeater. That the repeater. Oh, been up there. Yeah. This part. Right. Repeater's been up there for at least 25 years and better. Yeah. So it could be possibly be junk. I mean, it still works, but by the time you get it, pretty much uh, PNR said that it's probably 25 years old. And you're probably better off to replace. And put a new one. And if, I, the, if I work for you, know, and, and to answer your question, June 19th. June 19th, what? That's a postcard date to turn that down. Ah. How do I know that? Is because Corey sent me that today because he had told me that he wasn't going to be here and that, that repeater is part of what I was going to be bringing up. Correct. Yeah, he's got some discussion about the repeater and that's how we're going to call all the other stuff. So. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. We knew we knew yeah. this was coming down yeah. forever yeah. and, and yeah. we so waited until we 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 the, the last one off, the, off of it. And it would have been a lot of tea for seven years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buddy. Well, I guess I'll give the back. Is there money in the budget for this? For a repeater? Oh, for their budget? No. What are you pointing to? We should shoot something next. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're moving me along. That's what oh. you're doing, okay. <laughs> 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 that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> When do we talk about this? We will. That's what I was let's, get to that. let's get let's get to the chief. Danny, do you have anything for the counter? Well, we're talking about towers and stuff. I got an email Thursday or Friday saying we're at least possibly sixty to ninety days where they're going to turn this tower on. How can they do that? Don't know. We they said it's a. Go ahead. Uh, I responded back and agreed with Chief Wilkins today that we need to take some type of litigation against that company or we, uh, my feeling is it's a state system Either the AG's office or the governor's office gets involved to of course whether it's a court order to get it turned on I don't know but they're going with Frontier now but and not this company so I don't know what's going on well, how can how can somebody have something built, pay for it, and then the people that did it refuse to turn it on for you? That's, uh... And I talked to the county commissioners over here on Thursday and asked them about it, and they said the same thing. Two, they're looking at two to three months, they're shaking their heads. It's all down at the state level, and it's like their hands are tied. So. I'm going to call my little buddy Roy Clark and see what he can do for it. Well, that's all my list can do. To call Roy? Ralph. Well, Ralph. Well, you know, my, my biggest fear is someone's going to get hurt or someone's going to get killed because of the radio issues. Right. And that, affects, they're gonna take right. Action. And that affects this whole thing. That's what. Absolutely. Yeah. So. So. You no, know, the state's telling us ones we got to have our radios updated by 2025. You know, they don't care about the towers, right. you know, for us to be able to use the tower. They're worried about radios being cloned. This mark system has been a, been a pain ever since it started. But yeah, so this agile company or whatever, I think they ought to be held responsible. But I guess I'm not an attorney. I'm not a, a judge. But I think that's. But we do, we have no power because it's the states, right? I mean, right now, yes. Um, our hands are tied. Yeah. 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 That's baloney. Yep. But in the meantime, I mean, you can call. I'll call Roy. You feel like you can do diligence to call Roy or Rob McCauley and see if we can get somebody to uh, push the state to get this. this it's, it's ridiculous. It's taking too long. So we're going to talk to our reps and see if we can move quicker in the next day or two. So we're, we're paying for it right now. Right. It's not working. Man, it's not working. Uh -huh. So I feel like I got detoured to Fort Wayne or something. What's that got to do with this? Up or back here. Maybe I'm missing something. No, we'll, we'll get there. We shifted gears. We're not oh there my yet. goodness. How about we just stay in one gear? Oh well. Okay. Right. I'll patiently wait for an explanation. Uh, yes. Is that all you got, Chief? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. EMS, Bruce. Here we go. Now we're there. Now we're there. Now we're there. Now we're there. Now we're there.
fire. Why would you do that with the fire? I don't know. Before I get started, I just want everybody to know that we have cake over there for Bruce's retirement. So, so you guys can come over and have cake afterwards. Ah, uh, so a repeater. Um, yeah, myself, Stacy. Uh, we had nine one one director up here. We had PNR communications. We had SMTA here. Uh, PNR did look at the repeater that was sitting there underneath the water tower, and it is 25 years old. And they said they could move it, um, but there's no guarantee that it would work afterwards because it's 25 years old. Uh, they can they can put in a new one right over here at the firehouse with the battery backup, uh, a 100 watt repeater, and uh, it would. It would work and the reason why you need the repeater is right now all of the west end gets paged off that repeater so not only us but farmer and guess what else works on that the tornado sirens no repeater no tornado siren that's a problem and that's honestly the main thing because that's honestly the main we thing. We got Mark's pagers that will work now without the new tower, new Mark's tower. Yeah, if they came in today. They're not programmed, but we got them. So as far as fire department's concerned, once we get the new Mark's pagers programmed in the next week or two, we don't need the repeater. We're just like the police, but your tornado sirens need them. <coughs> your tornado siren needs it, and farmer fire farmer department fire still needs it. it. Right. Well, no. we'll. If that will farmer split this 14 with us I have not asked that of of uh, Jerry yet I mean I can 100% ask him I mean no it seems right I'm not going to think it would be a discussion to have yes it's yeah. just as well for them that it is right right Right, because it sets our tornado and their tornado siren off. If yeah. I remember yeah. correctly, yeah, yeah. Well. I mean, we're right. it's a joint thing, right. and it so benefits both of us. So from our township, in theory, should yes, yes. split yes. with us. So right now, right now, the right what you have in front of you, the cost would be to put that repeater in in the building next door at, at the fire station with the with. It being linked up to the tower out back, the antenna out back, and yes, it will work because it's a 100 watt repeater. It's brand new. Uh, PNR said that what you have now may may be operating at about 30 watts. Um, he's he couldn't give me uh, an actual number, but he's like it's 25 years old, you know. But but so. he thinks that that a a 100 watt unit. On, on that 75 foot tower is going to get out and I mean the thing that I'm seeing is is it gets put on a 75 foot tower immediately we have problems and he goes well you know you we're not high enough we'll have to put a tower back here and he guaranteed he me that worried. that would work out. Yeah, he's he, very he was, he he was very yeah, he was yeah. very adamant. That's what I like yeah. to hear. Well, it's going to potentially happen anyways because they were already looking into purchasing towers because we don't have anything to put it on. Yeah, we we were we had actually looked talked to SMTA. SMTA did have a tower uh, that was about the same height as as the water tower over here, and they had that for for. That we could have bought for ten grand. Okay, the problem is it's in Sherwood, so you're going to spend another fifteen to twenty to get it moved from Sherwood to here. Okay, so now, so now, why do that when when the guys from PNR are sitting there saying, "Look, this will work," um, and they'll put it in writing. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> well, it I, I'm a pessimist, and I'm no. not against the fire department what? at all. Are you serious? Isn't that what the marks <laughs> was labeled as? Well, yeah. This is so, going to be the cure all yep, for the. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm. And I'm, I'm not I'm, saying it's you guys. No, problem, I, I know. I, I know. So you can only I will say. You get four people to go to the marks. I will. I will say this. I will say this. Farmer has been. 
trying to buy more March stuff, okay, but they're just like everybody else. They're, they're, they have their financial constraints as well. Um, can a tornado siren at some point use the March system? Yes, but that's probably gonna be another 10 to $15,000. So why would we not go ahead and just spend the $15,000 now um, and, and honestly, I can talk to Jerry, uh, the fire chief over there, but I think that is a, an issue for, for politicians to figure out who's splitting costs, you know. Um, well, I think you, or Stace, has to have a conversation with Jerry. You, you too. Well, I mean, Jerry. And then the uh, township trustees and uh, probably... I don't know, finance or police and fire committee. Probably need to. Jerry knows that. Jerry knows that this is happening. Um, you know, again, we, Stacy and I were. We found out about this two weeks ago, three weeks ago. About three. Probably. About three weeks ago, and we immediately started making phone calls, making phone phone calls, calls. and doing and having meetings. To try and get the and everybody that's been helping you came on sp on scene immediately. <laughs> yes, you guys had everybody here. Yeah, got a plan had, together, and we had everybody here, um, just so that way that way we could all be on the same page. We weren't sitting there uh, trying to make phone calls and say, "Well, this is happening, this is happening." No, everybody's here. Nine one one, nine one one is is, a, is aware of what's going on. In fact, the day that they go to uh, to install it, uh, they will we will actually be testing the siren just to make sure that everything is a okay before before we make a switch. Um, is this like a one day completion, or will we be without a siren for a period of time? No, that's going to be one day. Okay. That's one day. They they said you might be without a siren for about uh, two three hours, okay. but. You know, well, it's a flip of a switch. If we leave that one alone, I was gonna say, yeah, right. here, it's a flip of a that switch. One works. Right, and right now, right now, um, the nine, the tornado sirens are all started down at down at the county level. So, um, you know, once they once they start, uh, once we tell them yes, go, we need to test. We can just call them, and they can they can we can do the test right then and there, mm -hmm. just to make sure. I guess in case people misunderstood, I, I'm not opposed to this, but when this company promises it's going to be blue, that's what I've heard with Marks for how many years? So, so, so well, yeah, and I guess you try to use it. So that's the way, my only the, concern. The, the way that the way that Alan and and the, the the guy was just very knowledgeable. The way that Alan described it is that the VHF that this u that this uses is not like a. It is not like a linear yeah, it a doesn't line. Need line of sight. Yeah, it well, doesn't no, need I guess I'll make sure if they say it's going to work, that when it comes time to flip the switch, it's not, oh, well, now we got this problem. No, one I, of the quotes says 75 foot, and the, and the other one does not. So, I mean, maybe have them add it to the new repeater quote so that we can at least have in writing that they agree that it's going to work on the 75 foot tower. It says when the tower has fire station. Well, is one just for the work on the inside? One is the, just to move the, the same same. existing one, and the other one is to buy a uh, new one. But so yeah, they just left it so they left that I don't think they're guaranteeing the old, the, old system, system. the old equipment will work on this, but they are guaranteeing the new will work. Right. Yeah, no, I was correct. just saying that the quote for a new okay. one doesn't actually say the 75 foot but the quote to have the old one moved does. So if no. we're worried about, if we need that verbiage in there, yes. But, like it's still, but uh, Tony, it still says utilizing the existing antenna on, on, on the tower at the fire station. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The only, it's just 75 feet is missing. It, it would be hard for them to beat yeah. us in court over that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if they can throw 75 foot in there, that I'm just trying to ease Ken's mind. Yeah. Well, no. That yeah. my problem is not the height or anything else. It's just having another company right. no, promising I, something that they don't fulfill. Here's a question. Stuck with. Uh, 
Well, if it doesn't work, we don't pay them. Yeah. Here's here's what I'll tell you. So the, day, the, the day that the day that they do the install and we go to and we and we go to start the tornado center, I'll call each and every one of you. And call me what? I'm kind of picture up here. I don't <laughs> need that. I'm using the plan. <laughs> Where's this money coming from? Do we have this money somewhere? I've already talked to Cheryl. I, like I said, I don't do anything without talking to her first. How we doing, Cheryl? We got some money? Mm -hmm. We don't have much of a choice. Yeah. We have to have a tornado center in our community. Right. Well, the only thing would be to see if farmer would be willing yeah. to. Right. Well, but I mean, even if they we won't. Still, but yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We still have to do it. Well, I'm not, I'm not a fan of moving the old one, I'll tell you no. that. No. This no. technology is 25 right. years old. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I, you actually pay more in miscellaneous parts by a thousand dollars. You pay another eighteen hundred dollars in labor if we're using the old stuff. Yeah, yeah. Does, so, yeah. Well, I think we're fortunate yeah. having to be able to work off the old yeah. tower here and have not having to buy a new tower, yeah. Yeah. trying to find a place for it. We're coming off less expensive and well, we're I, needs, so. we just you know like Stacy and I and, and and Mark we. We just want to make sure that we've got all of our bases covered because I because we all know that you guys are going to have questions and you know we want to try and have the answers for you to those questions. You know, do so we do we need to vote on what, which one we want him to do? I'll make a motion to install a new Motorola 100 watt repeater. The new one. The new one. And I will second that. Plus, install. The word 75 foot uh, between antenna on the 75 foot tower at the station. Put that in the contract. I can I can have them add that. I'll send them an email tomorrow. Okay. Roll call. Bassett. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Beverly. Yes. Martin. Yes. Miller. Yeah. Bailey. Yes. And just uh, like like Stacy said, our our new uh, our new pagers are in. Uh, they'll they're going to be delivered within the next two weeks. Uh, the programming that we would need for the radios, the what they call the link layer, uh, that is sitting over at the fire station right now. That's going to be updated. So P and R is going to be be here for. A, a few times in the next couple of weeks, you know, in the next hopefully month. Um, we, uh, I have told them that uh, June 19th is the date that I was given that that tower is scheduled to, to start. And I, the only reason why I said that is because of the, the email I got from Corey earlier today. So. But you're going to tell them when you talk to them tomorrow that, that we need it done within the it, month of May. Yes, yes. And they said they would. Yeah, and they would expedite because they, they understand, they understand, you know, what's going on. Um, so, uh, with that being said, 511 is out of commission again. Uh, last Monday, uh, we had four runs. Uh, and what we had been doing was any run that was here in town and if the hospital was not on diversion they they were to take 511 so that way we could see what would see if it was going to continue working <coughs> on our way back from a call the headlights started flashing they went to plug it in and kind of zapped at them um stacy actually kept it unplugged you know because we don't want to burn a building down <coughs> uh the next day i immediately called uh first response to see how much it was going to cost because I know Ron that's uh, what you would be asking uh, it's $135 an hour and it's almost and it's $300 just to get it over to, to lay out of it but it's $135 an hour and there's no guarantee that you're going to find it uh, the other day we had uh, we were fortunate enough to have Charlie come in I showed Charlie some some issues with with the ambulance the entire front dog house uh, you could call it moves I mean just all you got to do is try and take the radio off and it just moves so 
Um, not sure. Not sure. You know, throwing another one hundred thirty-five dollars an hour into a sixteen-year-old ambulance, um, as far as you know, that's just the, the chassis. The box, I think, is from the nineties. I could be wrong, but um, the box is old. We keep having issues. So I made a I made a phone call. I made a phone call to Braun. I got some prices on a new ambulance. A new ambulance is going to be two hundred seventy one thousand dollars. The availability of something like that, like turnaround. I'll have it here Thursday for it's a, a demo. Cast. This is a demo. That's this is a demo. Available. Available. Oh, okay. Um, so needless to say. Before you even ask, I went over and talked to Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I told her, I said, this is what we've got. These are the three options that we have from Braun. We have the one here in May, or we can wait until October or November. Personally, I don't think that we can wait that long. But I'm not sitting there. Have you talked, looked at bank loans, like what we did with the other one, mm -hmm. for monthly payments? And we 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 she did the interest rate unfortunately is not the best it, it really isn't so you know that's that's where we're at uh saturday um we could have used 511. we had a car accident right here at the corner of uh brian and, and high street and we were having training that day so we had five EMTs here. So, you know, two people or one person got transported up to Parkview and the other one got transported down here to CMH. But we had to wait on Sherwood to come into town for the person to be transported to CMH. That's the ongoing problem. There's no guarantee that when if we were to have 511 looked at, that it'd come back and it'd be fine. There's no I don't even know how long it would be out. I I, I I don't. I know this is not the news that you wanted. It's not the news I really wanted to give to you. But at this point, at, the, at this point, it is what it is, and I mean, we have, I, it'd be easier for me to tell you the days that we're not on diversion than it is for me to tell you when we are on diversion. And that's not a slam against the hospital, <clears throat> it really is not. It's just the way it is, just like. But, where are you gonna get the money? I mean. We, you know, uh, we've got a guy up here in Washington, he just prints it. And, and uh, then our great, 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 great grandkids, they can pay for that. But Cheryl don't have a printing press, and, uh, and I just don't know where the money's going to come from. And uh, my God, you talk to the bank, and, and they're telling you that just over 7% is the best they can do for you on, on over a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Only the first go-round. I mean, I check around some other banks. I mean, I was always a, a fan of getting a new EMS, not a, a used one. I know you were talking about yeah. getting one a few years old. Right. I'm just assuming you're going to inherit somebody else's problems with it. Right. Mm -hmm. I know we're paying on the other ones, like 2500 bucks a month. Yeah. Uh, we pass that levy. Uh, but there's money there from the levy, but I it's that not, would not be able to fulfill all your yeah, hiring, yeah. all your, your part-time. Right. You can't yeah. use it for that. It's for wages. That's what that levy was for. It was for a number of things. I think it was wages. They had about more than what the levy taken in. Is that their budget? No, that's what we went to bat for because they needed more EMTs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like we can't spend it for anything else. Yep. No. Well, that's back. We had two units going back at that time. But the uh, the ambulance was at both of them were running fine. And, now we've got this situation. Uh, in the meantime, though, have you checked out any grants? I know um, I have spoken with Tim Snyder with 
uh, J.D. Vance's office, they said there are some medical grants out there, uh, emergency grants. You talked to him once. I talked to him again last week. Uh, his office is actually looking at some maybe grants where uh, areas of, not plight, but areas that have certain situations, and we are kind of in a, not crisis mode, but we're changes to our health care um, capabilities in our area with staffing, with the hospital, with diversion, things of that nature, with transporting farther out. Um, I would definitely see, I don't have a problem working with, with that office, working with Bruce and reaching out to J.D. Vance's office. He said there are some money out there for certain situations like this, payroll, uh, new equipment, because we're traveling farther, need more staffing for that purpose and equipment. So I would look for some grants. Um, I don't know if you can check with your consortium uh, reaching out to some of those other entities out there to see if there's any grant money. I mean, grants just aren't fast. No, yeah, no, exactly. for no that, that, that might be up to that's 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 your way. The, yeah. the, the problem, and, and I have no problem looking into trying to get a grant, but the problem is, is if I if I wrote a grant tomorrow, it may not. It may be four months before I get a response. Or next summer. Yeah. Before they before, even considered you. Before I even get considered. Yeah. And, so I mean I'm not saying no, but I'm also being realistic about it. You know that that you know, sooner or later. You can't yeah. For a grant. Yeah. Well, if I'm wrong, Cheryl, if if we financed one, once you finance it and start pay, buying it, you can't get a grant money to pay for it. No. 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 Yeah. no but my question would be this, and and I'm going to defer to Cheryl on this. My question would be this. What is to stop you from buying one now and then re and refinancing when interest rates go lower? When do you think that's going to happen? Well, I hopefully, hopefully next year, anywhere when no. the new when the new president no. gets sworn in. No. I think uh, I think shop around for lower interest rates. I mean, it does have to be back here in town. Uh, ideally, you find one here in town, but you also have to go where the freight's at. But well, unfortunately, though, the Fed is still at seven percent. Yeah, that's that's the problem. You know, and nobody and no bank is going to no bank is going to sit there and go, "Well, I'll give it to you at seven percent." Yeah, it's not going to happen. Right. You know, I still don't think I still don't remember that levy being one hundred percent wages. Yep. That's not. It's I not, mean, no, it might have been somebody's intent, but that wasn't. It was for the. It was fire EMS that was yeah. worded, but we even right. said it says fire, but it was actually all for EMS, and that's for wages. EMS needs budget budget because their budget was deficit spending. Right. And it wasn't all wages. Well, they'll be back to deficit spending. If, if they fill all the part-time positions, that was one of my other questions: was how is the EMS billing going with that? Well, that we just started. We just started for, uh, May first. So, um, myself and Abby have a meeting with Michelle from the billing company on Wednesday. So, I'll be able to have some better, more concrete answers for you at the next council meeting. Or. You know what? Um, after that meeting, I can even call you. So I have no problem with that. You know, I, it's I don't realize I hadn't started yet because yeah, no, it, it, it happened May it started May first. So oh, I was yeah, was there last week? Yeah. So yeah, the and they are going back. They are going back to the beginning of January to so so that way we can they can start billing from the beginning of January back. So yes. Part of the part of the issue is you know using the billing money to pay for for the insurance itself you know and and also wages you know it it we're kind of juggling right now that we're in a juggle game where we're trying to figure out okay how do we do this and how do we do this with just this well it, you can't the the. The EMT has, has been a losing proposition since its inception, but it's a necessity. It's a service. Yeah. Right. EMS, I, I, EMS and, and if somebody wants to debate me on this, I'll be more than happy to debate. EMS was never, ever going to be a money maker. Ever. Not even, it won't even pay for itself. It won't even break even. Well, part of that, 90% uh, of that, Ron, though, is coming from is coming from those guys in Washington because they refuse yes, Medicaid, Medicaid and Medicare yes, to pay their fair share. Yes, sir. So, but um, that's the way it is. But that's the way it is. So, but unfortunately, we out here 
have to somehow figure out, okay, we have to, we need this, you know, how, how can we do this and still be able to operate? You know, I mean, I mean, right now, right now we've got, right now we've, we've got the ability to take one, you know, we got the ability to take one or two patients to Fort Wayne if, if we had to. We, we can't, I, I'm not going out of town with that. You know, I'm just not, I'm not, I, you know, I don't even want to take it down the road because you don't know. Did, did, when you got a, a, a price for, for one, 271 or whatever, did, did uh, was that anything for that one to be traded back against it? I haven't, no, I haven't talked about that because I wanted to bring this up to you first. I did, uh, so there's a power cut in the back of 511 that if we wouldn't have, uh, if I wouldn't have said, yes, we're going to move that, that was going to be another 70,000. So you would have been looking at three hundred forty thousand for this for a striker? No, for for the new power ambulance cut. because you got to have the you you want the power cot. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take the power cot out of All right out of five eleven and put it into the new one. Okay. So that saved you seventy thousand uh, dollars. You know by us just doing that. Yeah. That's just now the business. only other. The only other thing that you're going to have to be aware of, um, it's you're going to have to pay for graphics, okay, because it doesn't come, you know, with Hixel on it, and you're going to have to pay for radios, okay. The current radio, there, I mean, there's really no radios in there, so I got a quote. I just got a quote from PNR, and the reason why we're using PNR is because that's who the county's been <coughs> using. So I got a quote for a new radio um, for seven thousand. Okay. Now, what does that do? What does that do? That allows us to speak. All right. While we're in the back, while we're in the back, we do not have the ability to speak to any hospital unless we're on our cell phone. And do you know, and, and, and let me tell you, the service between here and Auburn, here and Bryan is not, not good. good. So if you've got a critically ill patient and you can't call out, that's a problem. So, so this new radio would be Marks and we would have a second, what they, what they, Consider this is what they consider a dual head. The second microphone would be in the back, so that way we could talk directly to the hospital, to the ER, uh, without having, without fear of our cell phones, you know, not not being able to work. So you're at 290 now, with graphics and a radio and right. And call uh, 300. Um, yeah, it's a nice round number. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and you know, I don't know. I don't know what they could give us. Give us for a trade in. The the gentleman that uh, I've been talking to will be here Thursday with the New England, so that way we could at least look at it. Um, and you know what? I can always ask him. Give me. To give me a ballpark on what. You no, know, you don't have to tell him everything's wrong with it. You know, you could just say, "Well, 16 years old, time to go." As soon as he sees the name on the back, he'll know what's wrong with it. Yeah. So. Was it say Beverly? No. Oh. <laughs> no. So it doesn't. Have but. To uh, so that's all my good news for tonight. That's enough. Well, that's that's so, well, I thank you for doing due diligence and looking at some different options for the ambulance. I mean, we got to do something. To either fix the old one or, or, or buy a new one or only have one. I mean, there are pretty much three options. So, it's up to you guys to make that decision and see where we can move forward with it. Is the other one functioning properly? The uh, 510? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's functioning properly. That's good yeah. news. Okay. Yeah, the, the, only thing, the only thing that it doesn't have and is the onboard suction and and the, the reason why it doesn't is because I can't take it out of service long enough because 511 won't stay in service long enough. 
Is, is the one that they're bringing right down, is it a bigger unit than what the E350 e is? It's going to be a 450. It's a diesel. Um, it's it's a little, it's about the same size as, as 511 now. Um, we've already got the, I've already got the schematics and everything. Um, they're going to uh, replace some locks for me. Um, but I've got, I've got the schematics. I've got pictures. If you want to see them, stop by tomorrow. I'll show them to you. Is it a van style or the conventional style? It's a what they consider a Type Two, so it's going to be like a truck style. So, Except the hood. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions for um, Bruce? And if you go ahead, no, go ahead. I was just going to say if you wanted to see, if you wanted to see it. It will be here 1.30 Thursday afternoon. I would love to see it and I would love to see you get it. I just don't know how in the world to pay for it. I mean, I went through you know all my business life and want a new backhoe or want a new dozer. And, and uh, when there's no money there, just, you're just... I, I, I mean you no disrespect, Ron, but does a backhoe or a dozer save people's lives? Mm -hmm. But money is money. If you don't have any, I I understand what you're saying. But I can use that backhoe in case that ambulance didn't work. Did the new computer get set up yet? No. Are you just waiting on? Uh, so the new computers are supposed to. I, I think they're getting ready to start out at the police department, and then. So you're on the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, well, I don't think it's going to be for a while. Right. Pretty soon. I don't know exactly when. Right. But they're ready to go. He's got all this stuff already bought for him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was going to be Bob there in a few weeks. Yeah. I'm looking at you now. Unless you got oh. something that I don't know. Are you taking care of your bikes? No, no I just saw it. Yeah. Right. He's like, got to work for a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah. He's not ready to go. Yep. Okay. Bob was in the day. Was he working on? Give me a time schedule with which department we're getting put in first. PD. PD first. Okay. They're the most complicated. All right. So, any more for Bruce? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Good, no? <laughs> oh, I was just wondering. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because look, fire truck in there. Uh, park director, anything for you guys? No, no just sure? keeping busy with the mapping back here. Huh? <laughs> We're just keeping busy with the mowing and a baseball field. So, yeah, baseball started what yeah. this weekend and their uh, opening ceremonies yeah. and everything. And so the girls are starting that. this week. Very good. Jared, you're here tonight. Thanks for coming. Anything for you? I got so nothing so today. Sure. You don't have a part of this deal, do you? Thank you. Fiscal officer. We have the income tax for March um, and the, oh, well, should be April. Sorry. The number looks bad, and I'm not exactly sure why, so I don't have an answer for you. We've got minus 21 over last year. <coughs> talk to Kim about that. We also have the um, mayor's court, which is back up and running. Utilities, you have the franchise fee report for MediaCom. Um, I put in a copy of the Hicks TV logo contest that's running and also the scholarship this year. Sorry for the ticker. Yeah, if you got any questions about that, you can ask Bill. Well, I had a question before you move on. Please, please, me and my mayor's sports back up and run. What was wrong with this? It was down. That was down. Well, well, we didn't have a clerk, but now we do. So we got a clerk. She had to get trained. New mayor, new clerk, new solicitor. We didn't know that this was going to happen. I know. <laughs> because what we're taking in even pay the salary. No. Well, then is it time to revisit to us? Well, we revisited it here beginning of year when I took over. We were waiting for Jennifer to get her training in there. Um, we talked. Uh, today's court actually had quite a few more, um, I guess, 
Customers. Not customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, customers. Customers. Um, we've been looking. We're, de we're definitely addressing um, with with our things happening within zoning, um, bringing them in if if they don't comply, things of that nature. So me and Chief's been talking a little bit. Um, the, like I said at the beginning, if if we don't have enough, um, I'm going to get the term wrong again. I don't want to say that. Don't have enough right? business, you'll quit. Well. We need to we need to make sure that Mayor's Court is doing its job with having local um, citations bring back back to Mayor's Court and due diligence in the number of court cases. We will work on that. I don't want to give up. We had Rachel spend several hours. I went to Mayor's Court. There's some more more Mayor's Court training. Um, but yeah, let's. We said we're going to let it ride for a little bit, see how it, what happens, and I think we need to do that. So. Well, it's not it's not uh, what goes on in the, in the Mayor's chambers. That's what happens out on the street. Um, and Jared, while you're sitting right there, I got one phone call, mm -hmm. two texts that they're not they're not going to mow their yard because the police department they won't mow theirs. <laughs> and I drove out to the PD. Looked pretty nasty out there. We don't mow the PD. Na, 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 na. <laughs> the village mows the PD. Yeah. Well, they haven't. He's yelling at me, not you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And and the one guy said, <clears throat> and I'll give you his name tomorrow. Uh, he's not moving any of his cars that he got a letter on because the PD keeps junk trucks out there. That's not a junk truck. Da, 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 da. Honestly, well, <laughs> it, you want to say it's a junk truck? It's not a junk truck. I'm just conveying what was pre well, presented to me. It is a junk truck. It's done now. You can get rid of it if you want to. Rachel, have we not been working on this? We've been discussing it. Yes, thank you. We've been talking about that too. So I've noticed there's some. How long has it been there? Three years. We're going to get moved. The mowing, we, I'm just, I'm not making, um, we have a new mowing guy. Uh, he started here, what, two weeks ago? Um, he loves it full time. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what, Vince Memorial looks bad, that three acres we own looks bad? Yeah, I can't make excuses. I don't know where he's been it's, and Corey's eye. It's a combination of new guy and yeah, how many of you have had trouble keeping up on your grass? I know I have mine. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> don't you? You can't use that one because I rode around town, and everybody's pretty well got their yards moved. Well, <laughs> don't look at my he he got he got thrown into a bad. He was behind from day one. Yep. Um. It was, and we. I even started mowing a few days prior to him coming because it was getting that bad. And it has only snowballed with the rain and the. I, right. I, I mean, would there, hate to there, see uh, you. I would hate to see you out mowing, uh, because you've got enough. If you do your yeah. job, you should not be out on a mower. Sure. <clears throat> and we we had a discussion with him today that, um, unfortunately, he's just going to be the one that. I mean, he's basically going to have to mow from sun up to sundown. Have Have you? Has anybody watched him? Is, is he? I mean, some people are, we, just they just pedal around and and he's. Um, I know the only way I I go check on him every once in a while and see if he's got any questions because sometimes he has a he's afraid he's going to get onto somebody's property they're going to get mad at him. I said that there nobody's going to get mad at you for mowing their yard. They're going to get mad at you for what? And he's he. He's, one thing is is he's trying to be. We since we've had all this with the blowing grass in the road. Mm -hmm. um, he is being diligent about not doing that. Um, we had a discussion with him. You know, people it. make such a, a big deal about that. And and I live on, on the state road mm -hmm. and I've got this mower and it blows out this <coughs> way. So when I mow my front yard, instead of going this way and blowing it in the yard, I go this way and you know that that mower will go the same speed and do the same thing and blow it the other way? Mm -hmm. I don't know why people are having such a problem with that. It's really easy to do. We're, we're uh, the best I can say is we're fine tuning him. 
um, it was a it was a big task throwing him in, and we were, I would say that we were four to five days behind when he started, and it's gotten nothing but worse. And we were trying to come up with a solution to get him caught back up today. But just as you said, I don't have time to do it. If I'm doing my job, I don't exactly. have I don't have time to jump on a mower because we thought, well, maybe we borrowed their their backup mower down at the park and you just just go get some of these knocked mm -hmm. down, right. give him a fight, you know, give him a give him a chance to get caught up. But I, I on my way here, I ran into him. He had stopped at Marathon to. I seen him. Go to yeah. go to the restroom, and he was Still headed to home. try to get two more done tonight. He was tonight. Park at 4:30 when I came up here. He was doing the Veterans Memorial He's when I was there. Back so um, we kind of re-expressed our urgency as far as we need to catch up, and that may take 10, 12-hour days right now because he was he was behind when he started. He was very he was not very fast when he started. Um, some of these properties are difficult to mow. There's hidden things in them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not smooth. Um, that's not an excuse. That's just a... Oh, I'm, just, I'm just reporting <clears throat> the, the, sure. the, I the calls and the texts that I got today. Oh, we, yeah. Okay. You gotta quit giving out your number. <coughs> I didn't give it out to them, none of those three. Well, you're working, well, he's kind of still in probation mode here with what he's doing and how he's doing, so. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a large topic of discussion today between me and Corey, okay. so um, we are just telling him to try to have a little bit of patience with us. And and I would volunteer my time if you wanted to borrow one of their mowers. We're I know how we gotta use our <laughs> you, you we found get our all all nothing, nothing, are you? <laughs> we found an empty shed when we went down to look for uh -huh. their mower. <laughs> <laughs> they probably hit it. <laughs> Seeing us coming. <laughs> Chuck, anything else for these guys? I just had a couple quick things. Um, Verizon Tower update. Uh, Mark Warnicky. I got an email here, I'll just read it real quick what uh, American Tower said. Mark reached out last week and was really adamant about getting this completed. Um, he threw him a real hard new, um, email to American Tower. It says, return back. It says, I Mark, ATC is pending approval from Verizon as to relocation of the utilities on site. I have followed up again and unless we hear an objection by the end of the week, which is next week, we will be moving forward and a draft amendment will be issued for your review. So hopefully within the next week here, I mean, it was supposed to be at the end of this week for their final review. Um, I'll reach out to Mark and see if we can get this resolved here within the next week or so to move that. Uh, so right. if this falls, falls and fails, how long would be, it would be a several year process <laughs> probably if you wanted to throw them off of that property? Yeah, I'm sure it'd take quite some time. Absolutely. Sure. I wonder what litigation would take it farther out years. Um, again, I told you Mr. Keller was patient. He's got some other endeavors, but he is still interested in the property. Um, I think Mark made some leeway headway with with his email to him. So hopefully we can get on the sign off here real quick. I wanted to give you a quick update update on that. Um, I went ahead, I, you have it in your packet, I'd have Cheryl to pass that out there. Ohio Ethics Law, it is required that all council people take that. It's a one hour class. I took it here the other day on Friday. It's simple. I got a 50 out of 50. I got most of the questions wrong and the girl, she talks more than she does, you know, different scenarios and she's very good uh, web speaker. <laughs> Did the uh, questionnaires, like, geez, I'm missing a lot of these. I felt bad, but eh, I took it anyway, still passed, so. Um, it, it was simple, um, if you guys could take it online, um, it's easy. So. How'd you get a 50 out of 50 and you missed a lot of questions? <laughs> well, it was like, she, she started skipping questions because she had talked so long about certain situations and, and things that can happen that she said, ah, we'll just start skipping the questions and moving forward. Uh, so so I had four, but yeah, unethical, you could do that, but uh, <coughs> so you get an hour worth of credit. That is one we have to take. Yeah. Is that different than the Sunshine Law? Yes. yes. That's, That's three hours. Because we get an answer on the Sunshine Law. The other Sunshine Law was 99% ethics. It is. It's, it's covering the same stuff. They're both, they're different. It is. It's covering the same stuff. It is a lady talking to you. 
It could yeah, be from the same one. I, I did the Netflix one. Yeah, I sent you my certificate, but it was right. a lady and a guy talking, and they just went through a lot of different scenarios. Right. Um, know so they give you some scenarios yeah, to say yay or nay yeah. on. It's pretty. You simple, can watch out so. anytime you want. Just once you start it, you have to watch it the whole yeah. throughout the whole thing, and you can't just walk away from it. You got to follow through because you got to answer questions, and then we'll continue playing. And if you think you're going to get away with it, the little thing comes on. Are you still there? It doesn't even do that. Doesn't no, no, no. She is very uh, personable. I mean, you pretty stay good. interested. It's quick and simple. It was fun. I mean, she had a lot of different scenarios and situations that you can put yourself in or you shouldn't get in. And she would ask questions. Some of them were trick questions, and you know, uh, she would give you the answers on different mm -hmm. things. So. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, please get that done. Um, we have four fire chief resumes at this time. The ad ran. Um, I'm going to get, I asked Eric Bassett and Tony, um, and then we've got two firemen that are going to be on my committee, so we're going to start doing interviews here, um, probably not the end of this week, but the following. So, like I said, we've got four applicants that had submitted, but we will get started on that. Um, that's all I have. I know school is getting close to coming to an end. There's lots of activities at the school. Um, they had prom this last week. Why is he doing that? What? Pulling Tony and Eric and uh, for police and fire. I'm picking the chairman of the personnel committee and a chairman for fire. And then two firemen. I see. So. Okay. That's where we're at on that. Um, that's all I had. Is there anything else for the council to address? I will make, make a motion adjourn. to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Third. No. <laughs> Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.